when I come to United States, when I look back to my life doing the killing field, the word is killing field. I, uh, I never dream, never know exactly how the word say the killing field. The field is, the Cambodia is uh, 85 percent, the people live in Cambodia is a farmer. And the farmer, they work in all is rice field. In 1975, in April 17, or April 1975, when the Pol Pot and uh, win the war, they say American lost the war, but they just do not know. Anyway, when they took over, you see the picture there, they moved all the people from the city, the city like Gulf Town. So in that time, I am just 18 years old, and when I'm in the prison, they, the, uh, they put all the prisoners working at daytime. They start from 5 o'clock all the way to uh, 6 o'clock. Then they bring, uh, bring it back and they lock up. But during in the field working, they give us a little food to eat. So some people, they die on the field. They left out there and not bearing, just left out there. Uh, you can tell when they plant the rice, they, they put us work on the rice. When they plant the rice, and the rice turns blue in one spot, that is human body. We talk about, I have my dog uh, with high cancer and dies. We bury our dog, put in a nice place. I look back, Three years, eight months, 20 days, the people die in the field. Nobody care. My life is struggle. When they move the people out from the city, when they screen it to the point I cannot imagine this, how scared I am. Um, you see that hole, the word said, dig your own hole, dig your own grave. I know they're going to kill me, but how I going to dig my own grave to bear my own cell? On that time, I lost my father, my father the same place. I see the people taking the kill include my father in the same spot. They kicked me into the hole where I'm digging my own cell. When I look to the scripture in Philippines, I love, I like that Paul he wrote in. Whatever you do, work at it from your heart as you're working for the Lord not for your own human master. I even not know, is God working with me in that time? Um, I am called myself a Buddhist believer. But I dig on my hole, dig my own grave. I'm able to do it because I'm scared to death. Anyway, I'm scared to death, but I know I, I'm going to die anyway. But I learned that if I not dig on my hole, they couldn't put me, just throw me outside there. So just dig my hole. Again, the killing field is my experience to live through it. Today, I have privileged my family sitting here. I have my daughter, it's part of me. My brother-in-law, he been in the prison with me. He worked in a rice field, digging education. He come to work in Phnom Penh shoot me with AK-47. They miss with the 
40 bullet. They cut him, beat him, put him in the prison again. I have my sister survived her husband, her husband <laughs> been killed her husband. And her son there, my nephew. I carry him across the jungle, take us one month to travel from Phnom Penh to the border, about 200 miles. Come to the jungle, my wife, pregnant with my daughter, four months, we cannot go to uh, the border, but somehow uh, I carry him in the like put in a backpack, but not backpack, don't have no backpack, but uh, he's just my, just a backpack, but we get him to the camp, to reunion to his mother. Anyway, go back to Cambodia. In Cambodia, with three year, eight month, and 20 day, seemed like 40 year in violence when I read the story of Moses. More than that, the Israelites, they have plenty Food, meat. I had to eat grass, eat leaves to survive. All kind of disease. Miserable. I have uh, disease from uh, Oren, Agent Oren, that uh, 1968, 69, that American uh, war in Vietnam. The, uh, I live just about 10 miles from the border. So the B-52 dropping and the uh, Agent Oren spreading, killing the tree. So the water buffalo, eating grass, eating trees, had the sea. I had infected. Uh, at the night time, I sneaking out, cut the meat, try to eat and survive. I cut my hand, I had infected. They put me in the field. Uh, I had a coma in there. I do not know how long I've been in the field. I walk up, someone wrap my hand with the herb, Chinese herb medicine. I do not know who it is. When they release me, not release, they scare from the fighting from Vietnam, uh, 1978. Uh, when they release us from the prison, we managed to get out from prison. Uh, I am 19 years old, cannot walk by my own. Uh, just bone and skin. Uh, my sister fed me when I come back to the, to the uh, farm, to the village. So from that time, in 1975, go through 1979, like a 40 year, I say. Then 1979, November 1979, 79, I heard a refugee camp open in Thailand. So my sister, she went out and take one child. So I have two child left. I have to take care of him. So when I uh, go to the Thailand, again, there is camp, but the camp spread all over. So when I get there, uh, I am a Buddhist follower, my parent, my great-grandparent, but when I go through the camp, I see American, see the uh, Western people, Europe people, coming to have refugee. Then I ask them who they are. They say, I am a Christian. Everyone, they call themselves Christian. I never heard the word of Christian at that time. I say, what do you mean Christian? Say, we follow Jesus Christ. Why you come to helping us? Because the love of God. That, because the love of God. I never heard that word before. So, the word keep in my mind, my heart. I look around the fellow Buddhists. No one around me come to helping me. I look back, my parents, me, follow Buddhists. The people believe in Buddhists, no one show up to help when I need it. 
So the word Christian keep in my heart. When I come to Philippines, I see a lot of Christian there. No Buddhists come to have privilege again. When I go to the Dallas in cold time, in Cambodia, the weather is a uh, 100 degrees, 110 human energy. So when I come in Dallas in uh, first week of March, still cold, so very cold, no clothes, just a little uh, slight uh, shirt and pain. But again, I see the Christian bring me clothes, bring me food. I say, why they do this? They say, the love of Jesus Christ. That go into my heart. One night, uh, one evening, well, go back, my daughter, Seaborn and Rivji came. A little bit to eat, my wife bread feed, feed her. So we do not know how to eat hamburger or American food. So we eat rice all the time. So it's been a long day, uh, a week, and we cannot eat American food much. So we're hungry. I stay on the street looking for help. I learned a little English in the refugee camp. Um, uh, the people teaching us in the camp, when you go to United States, you need a white stranger. So again, they said, if you looking for help, only the Christian people, you can ask for help. That keep in my heart again, Christian people. So I stay on the street. I see, I read the, a little English on the side of the white van. It say, Highland Park Church of Christ. And I wave the hand, and he come and pick me up. I don't know what day and that time. So they put me in the church, feed me, give me clothes, bring me back to apartment. Next day, take me again. I say, who this guy, who these people coming to help? Again, the love of Jesus Christ. So I've been in the church from that day. Later on, I find out that day is Wednesday night. So I learned a little more English in the church. Take me from that time, March 1st, to June, like, July. Take me that long to accept Jesus Christ. In the camp, I met many, many Christians come to help me, but I had denied it. I, have, I believe in Buddhist because my family is Buddhist. Now, I learned that Jesus Christ the Lord when I give my life to the Lord in June 81. I look back at my life, the killing field. I say, no way to go back to that field. Go back to country. I say, bye bye. I come to the country we call the heaven. I'm working to raise my family. I not accept food stamp welfare. I want to work in from my own strength. In three years, I able to own a house. In eight years, I able to own the land in the United States. In 12 years, I able to own a business. I sit in, I proud myself. I am a Christian, I say, my work, I love, this year is seventh, second annual for me for coming here. I love the work, faith, work. I am a hard work. I work all the time. So when I become a Christian, I commit myself, I say, I serve the Lord from my labor. I say by the bus driver, I commit myself to try the bus, that my plane. I try to forget what the past, what I've been lived through it. So that I learned the hard way, I call myself a Christian. Come up to 2005, 
And we started church in Dallas, in East Dallas, in Mesquite. I said, well, this, I can serve the Lord over here. I don't need to go to serve the Lord in Cambodia. I built a nice home in Terrell. I love to fishing and hunting. So this is my dream home at 2000. So when I finished the house, I was able to live there for two years. When I go to Cambodia, 2005, before I go in, I read one book, an Old Testament book, Second King, chapter seven. When I read the story, just my hair coming down. The leper, they say they couldn't die, but they tried to go to the camp, try to find the food. I do everything, try to find the food to survive. When I see the story, just hit in my heart. I've been hitting for a long time. The four leper only a couple of day. They say they had to take this good news to the city. I am been hiding for many, many years. My fellow Cambodia, starving. They don't have no hope. I have hope in my life. Now when I read that, I learn that. I need to share the gospel, the good news to Cambodia. In three years, eight months, and 20 days, I do not have hope. Now when I come to United States, I see the hope. I see the love of Jesus Christ. Why I'm hitting. So that why the killing field is need to be a hoping field. The killing field is need a kingdom field, God kingdom. So like Mike share, he become close brother. The work is so great. God changed my heart. Why I say God changed my heart? Because when I read in Matthew only one time, chapter five, verse 43 and four, Love your enemy. I close the book. I don't want to see it. Love your neighbor. Vietnam is my first enemy. My neighbor. I don't want to see it. When I go to the school, somehow, my instructor showed me, you need to go through this. Love your enemy. Pray for your enemy. I said, no. For me, enough. I had to revenge. I did not know the scripture much that time. Now I confess, God move me. I have a plan. This is my plan. It's a complaint. My son, in 2005, when he finished high school, I say, go to Harding, because in that time, I do not know Pepperdine. <laughs> <laughs> so Harding is a mission field. I say, my son, go there when he finished taking his Bible major so you can go to Cambodia on behalf of me. He don't want to go. i pushing him. He said, Dad, I just do this for you. After two years, he come back to me. He say, I change major. I cannot do it Bible major. He say, you, Dad, you go back to Cambodia, not me. <laughs> I say, I have a nurse in Cambodia. You need to go there to have experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, Cambodia, I say bye bye Cambodia. God say no. I read the story of Jonas. 
I say, well, Jonah tried to hide from God, run to the west. So come run to the west. Now so come go back to east. The country so come hate it. So come how in my mind, God punished them. They do bad things to my family, to me. But the love of God changed my heart. Two thousand five and six, two thousand six, my daughter there. When I go to my home village, I bring medicine. I brought miscarinet, rice. Go back to my home village. The people that slaughter my family is there. God changing my heart. I do not have bitterness in me no more. When he saw me, they ran away. I said, come, come to me. I come not for revenge. I bring the good news of Jesus Christ. So come cannot do it. This word, God, move me, change me. The forgiveness, I cannot make it. God changing me. God changed my life. Thank God. Take me 30, almost 30 years, try to forget about the past. I learned the hard way. I forgot, put God on the side. Then I give up my life. God, please help me. Remove, remove my bitterness. I did. God did. So when you go back, Let's spin forward and start. This is some of the culture in the villages. The yeah. Cambodia minivan. Yeah. I'm glad he, he can tell you all this because he's there. Uh, this is the, uh, a Tyson truck. Yeah, Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> this is especially for PETA. Those chickens are all alive. Great food. You can't. You don't want to miss the food there, hog head especially. And uh, we're just going to spin through the children. Yeah. The children in Cambodia are precious. Uh, maybe a third of the children, third of the population is 15 years old or younger. Um, smiliest little children in the world. And how many is Buddhist? Is um, the country is 95% uh, is a Buddhist. And um, they have one million, they call jam. Uh, live in Cambodia, they're Muslim, but they have two different jam. One is uh, radical, one is just regular jam, they don't care much. Uh, so, um, it's so great. When I went to Cambodia, again, um, when I looked at today, I show my say, well, um, I go to Cambodia in November, uh, 2009. Then I look back, I escaped from Cambodia in November 1979. So exactly 30 years I left the country and go back to the country where I love, I love number three in there. So um, we go to the village of full of jam and the Muslim and they, they call themselves uh, a Christian but they're still confused. And anyway, they invite us to go there and teaching them about the new uh, life in Christ. Uh, they know all the Old Testament Bible, but they call themselves Christian, but they not look in the New Testament Bible. So we go there and teach them and share them about uh, the Lord's Supper. They say, what do you mean the Lord's Supper? So we teach them, to do the crack and they cannot find the grape juice, so they find something red color and bring it in and say, well, we just teach you how to do next time you do the right way. So we start doing. <laughs> we had sugar cookies and uh, <laughs> strawberry juice. <laughs> so uh, the first time they do a communion, we do communion, some not a Christian yet, still Muslim. And the Muslim do the communion to remember Jesus died on the cross. For our sin. It's great. Okay. The Bible school. 
Sukhum live in Dallas for almost 30 years. Try to get to school, cannot finish school. And I go there, try to, my skill is I love to knock the door. And in Dallas, because every day after work, I get out from my business close early and go straight to East Dallas and knock the door. That I love to knock the door. So uh, bring the people to the church. That how I do it, I don't want to go to Cambodia. I want to knock the door, my next door here. So <laughs> then uh, go there. I want to work in the village because the village people, what I'm growing from the village. I love the village people. So uh, when we start the school, uh, first my say, well, uh, we, we not talk about school, but I talk about evangelists in the village. Then I spend like from November 2009 to September. I call Mike, we need to change our strategy. <laughs> I think not, not to come, Lord again. You know, when I come back, I go back to Cambodia, I tell, I go by faith. I left my business, my wife say, why you left your business? I say, I commit myself to serve the Lord. And the war not here, they do not have enough support for me to go. And I tell the mission committee, I say, I buy one way ticket. He says, Sukhum, why you do this to me? I've been working here for 25 years, no one do this to me. I say, I did. <laughs> He's not talking about me. <laughs> the mission so, chairman. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, he walked away. Then I say, Ronnie, the Lord changed my heart to me except to go back to Cambodia. I saw why eating grass. Six, seven times I've been dying already. If I die for the Lord, I'm so happy. I'm very close in heaven. The work fades to work. I step in the water, not like Peter, but I step and go. Thank you, Peter. Muslim converted. I bring this young man from the village. It's a Muslim village, bring him put in the school. <laughs> They're not even Christian yet. And that time, I called Mike, we need to start school. You need to raise the fund. He said, again, you, not, you, uh, you support not have enough yet. You give me another job. <laughs> I said, not wait me. till we raise the money, <laughs> then we'll build onto the school. Too late, brother. Already started. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go by faith. When he get there, this young man not converted yet. We rent the house, and I brought him there, put him next door. Hmm. Then there's no lock in the front door, and the back door, dead lock. And he know the Muslim sleep on the back, but he thought it's a locking door. I want to share it, and you, you share with it. Well, he's got speaker wire tied on the front door. I got 19 Muslims right next door to me. He's got speaker wire. That's how he's got me securely all by myself on the third and fourth floor. But we had uh, these men, we taught them for over a week, worked with them. Uh, two Buddhists, 19 Muslim, and uh, uh, baptized all of them on Saturday and on Sunday Sakom came up to me and he said uh, brother he said did you know that we baptized 19 Muslims yesterday that was September 11th and so we baptized 19 Muslims on September 11th which was I think God maybe was saying something there next picture this young man here his life similar to me I am growing up in a far, close to Vietnam, far away from the city. Never know what the city looked like. This young man, when he, uh, I brought him in, I asked him how old, he said 21. 
how, uh, how great you are in school, fifth grade. I asked him to write for me. He cannot even write in Khmer language in fifth grade. He said, why are you in fifth grade? I said, I go to school only one hour, two hours a day. And my teacher not have it all. And I learned that myself, I cannot travel more than two miles at my home. He the same. Uh, I come to the United States when I learned how to deer hunting. I'm sorry, somebody. Uh, I, I, in Texas, you had to be hunting. <laughs> so uh, they say, deer, after they born, only travel two miles. I say, it's the same Cambodian young man, travel only two miles from the day they born. So when he come to school now, uh, again, when he come to the school, he's not a Christian, he's a Buddhist. And now he become a great, a great servant of the Lord. He go back home, start what we call a, a, a house church. Now he's teaching a doll with 20 adults every night. Guess how many hours a night? Three hours from seven to 10. One day he come to me, he say, he called me teacher, I say, no, you call me brother, or call me succumb. And we just, just a servant, just slave to the Lord, not call me teacher. So now I want to respect you, I want to honor you because you're helping me. Anyway, uh, he said, my home is a, a, kind, a candle, I don't have no, no light for study Bible. And can you do something? We learn about a little later, you will see that home look like. So he's a great young man, commitment, faith, work. Every day, seven days a week, work all the time. It's great, great. One man over there is a former Buddhist, and this young man, former Muslim. We tell them to serve the Lord's Supper, communion, with the Muslim, former Muslim and former Buddhist our student, share at the, the village people, how we come together and as a brother, not many nations, one nation. So, a graduation student second year, so they already go back to plenty church, and everyone, we have um, uh, the third one from the, the left, and uh, he a good uh, learning English, so I try to train him to take over my work when I able to do. And this first man here, he had to confess. Because when my daughter brought him to school while I'm in the state, when I go back, I say, this man handicapped, why are you bringing him to school? He, able, he, he unable to speak, his voice tight, do not have, his hand crippled. And he sit in the corner, he become the, I love him, number one student in the school. Good preacher, I call him good preacher, old preacher. He working hard, teaching children, 24 little one from age to 12, 25 from 13 up to 18, now every day. So one of our legs of the work is our Bible school to train young men to become preachers in their villages. And uh, uh, Chum Nan, the one on the bottom left, I, I didn't know why he was there when I was there in April 2012. And after about two days with him, he's got a little squeaky voice. He was electrocuted in a fat clothing factory that he worked in. And it blew out the nerves in his fingers and blew out his vocal cords. He's got this little squeaky voice. And after about two days, I told Sakoma, if I came to Cambodia and needed one man to work with, I'd take Chum Nan. Unbelievable faith. He, he wanted to be like Paul. He wanted to serve the Lord all the time. And I'm going to pass out. I didn't do this earlier. If you'd like our newsletter, it's not a solicitation, but if you want, we put out three, four reports a year. And uh, it's not a money request ever, but it does keep you informed of the work. But if you want, would like it, if you would fill it out and pass it around, uh, we'll mail out things, uh, our newsletter that we send yeah, we out. We have uh, Joe. He's um, from... Uh, 
go court, uh, even out there every time we graduate, go court road is a uh, uh, help in the school. It's a great. Uh, when we start school, we say, where well, we have the fun to do this, and the go court road is step it in and do all this. Is thank God for for that. We're gonna. We our yeah. students are not gonna be supported. We're helping them become self-supporting, set them up like with goats in their village or cows or chickens, uh, different trades that they will uh, do so that they can be self-supporting rather than us sending money every month. So we're doing micro loans, two, three years down the road, they have to start paying back as their flock or herd of goats starts to multiply. And it's a, it teaches them responsibility. They have ownership and don't turn it into a welfare system and a uh, much better way to do it. And when they need help, we'll help them, but generally they'll, uh, they'll be self-supporting. This is the solar panel. Yeah, that the house, uh, Niang, I talked about early, uh, he, when he come to school, he told me he say he had brother and sister, and this home there he live on. And one year they have, they believe a lot of Cambodia, they believe the devil spirit, and this, he say, he's had two brothers and one sister being possessed by the evil spirit. And now that home become a place of worship of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, everyone in that home now is a believer. I talk about the, he's teaching seven days a week from Monday through Sunday every night. And the solar panel I brought up there, put them so they have a light to read the Bible. No electricity on no the border electricity. there. The road take like a four or five miles, take me an hour to get there. Just a four or five mile from the main road. Uh, how hard it is. Well, again, the work, the Lord has been giving the work, talk about work, work. He's given me a nickname, a slave driver. I don't know whatever. <laughs> um, our medical mission is a... Uh, it's the first step that Cambodia opened the door to Cambodia. When I am come to the camp again, I've been saved by a brother, sister in Christ, the word, the love, the work, faith and work. So I take this as my uh, serving the Lord in Cambodia. How I start a medical mission. When I go to Cambodia, a young man, 18 years old, had appendicy. And he come to me, brother, please pray for me. Doctor tell me only one week I'm going to die. But I had, 300, I had to have $300 for admit to the hospital. Did not take me in. On that time, I had only $100. And I'm selfish. I'm afraid I don't have no food. The man tell me he's going to die one week. I confess, I still kill him, but I do not have it. A month later, I find out he died. Why I give my life, say, my fall. Again, I don't have it. So how we start a medical mission? Uh, then. This is our bus. Dr. Jin, I tell you a little bit about him. He's my enemy. Become my brother, become my coworker, become my best friend. The bus with the Vietnamese, with the Malaysian, with American, with the Indonesian, Philippines, um, Philippine, uh, different people. So we go to the way out there, I call the word boondog, I mean somewhere the bus stuck. We had to uh, dig the ground and move the bus to go in. All of our, minis all of our ministry mm. is in the villages, the remote villages. Mm. Most of them don't have electricity, don't have any medical care. And uh, so uh, we do a major medical mission trip every January. This January we treated 8,658 patients Last year, 11,934, and we've treated over 100,000 patients since 2009. We get dentists that come from the Philippines and eye doctors and uh, uh, 
Malaysians, Singapore people are coming. We have some U.S. people. In August, we have a pretty good uh, medical mission trip coming up. This picture, Joanna standing by. This is a Muslim village. About a thousand Muslims all standing around Joanna. She's been so killing the slave driver. She's so worn out, she doesn't know anybody's even standing there. She's just looking down at the ground. And, uh, I've been learned it from Pol Pot, work at 4 o'clock in the morning and go back at 8 o'clock at yeah. night. <laughs> Every day on the bus, he gets on the microphone. I'm so sorry, but we have to get up tomorrow morning at 4 o'clock. Well, I love the word mission. We are on a mission field. So, again, our medical team and helping and uh, is uh, so helpful to the people. Uh, this is a doctor from uh, Singapore. And um, Dr. Yin Kim uh, Gold and Jackson, uh, and we call um, acupuncture, is our um, what, CVS. Yeah, Cambodian is uh, very sick. <laughs> Cambodia, we see. <laughs> he put in there Cambodia very sick. So, uh, waiting so for their prescriptions there. Uh, and see, the dentist pull, sit in the grass and uh, working there every, every day. Um, Nail the eye chart to the yeah, tree. Drag your foot through the uh, dirt. We thank you for Lion Club uh, provide the eyeglass uh, to us. Those are the five thousand pair of eyeglasses. Yeah. Yeah, the young man had only one eye. The uh, the man, the doctor from Philippines, tried to give him a uh, glass, a glass uh, for the eyeball. And, they enjoy um, these two <laughs> yeah, uh, young women there from uh, Dallas. Screw uh, I gave them a little slack to have a break, so they're smiling. So, uh, well, uh, Kitty, uh, how with the children? I want to share. This is public school, uh, elementary public school. When we go to the village, I have make a deal with the chief of the village. I say we want to bring our doctor and nurse and medicine come to your village but in condition. You had to find a hundred men and women come to uh, study Bible with us. If you cannot find a hundred men and women come to study Bible, we're not gonna come to your village. <laughs> <laughs> so he say, I gonna do it, please come. And uh, where the place? In the school, public school. I say, we gonna teach in Bible in the public school? He say, yes, no problem. I look back, my son, one time he told me he wanted to pray, he had stress. In the school, one time somebody caught him, not let him pray in the school, and said, USA is a Christian country, and not let some student pray in a public school. God opened the door to Cambodia. We can share the gospel in the public school. It's wonderful. This is Kitty so, Thrift. Her husband, Ron, yeah. was a professor here at... Pepperdine years uh, ago. Yeah. And this is, uh, my, my house is, this is uh, my daughter, daughter teaching uh, on the Buddhist the, temple yeah. property. Uh, Buddhist temple behind her there. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, These children, it's 60 people in this trip. It's a joy uh, bus. <laughs> in the front, inside, too, in the back, is the, the, the truck I bring in back to Cambodia. It's my business truck. I able to bring him to Cambodia to serve the Lord there. Uh, uh, the purpose uh, of this picture, this is a government building yeah. that they let us use. On that county, uh, we are close to Vietnam border. When I go there, they say, well, it's a hot this time of the year. We do not have a place. You, uh, you can teach the people uh, your God and our building, no problem. The government gave us the place to teach the Bible there. It's a public school, the ceiling broken. This elementary school take us about four and a half hours from the city to go to their place. No electricity, everything falling in, but they shut down the whole school. Yeah. We go in there for two days to each village, shut down the school, the kids get, they don't have to go to school for two days. We just take over all the classrooms that we want with doctors, dentists, teach Bible, teach Jesus, have children's Bible classes. Um, um, when I see this, I remember, remind me in the Matthew Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> uh, people all over the field, when the sun shines and hot, they're moving on the shape of the tree and move around. 
is so great. You know, when I, can I have a minute? Um, <laughs> when I, we had a church in Mesquite, we built a nice place. They had the, the floor is the carpet and the cushion. I work an automotive business. I put the cushion in the chair because people complain it. it's, it's hard on the wood. So I put the cushion in there. When I go to Cambodia, I go there looking for the church. I ask people, where the church can I, I, I go to visit the church? They point the finger there. I say, where? Under the tree. The church under the tree, under the mango tree, under the bamboo tree. And I look back to Dallas. The church, even they have air conditioning, they complain. They have the color not much, they complain. Com complain. Welcome to Cambodia. Sit on the floor, worship God. I working, it's so joyful to see the people, open heart. Um, again, in the government uh, building, is a Muslim and Buddhist come to study Bible. They come together and put in one place. The young lady there, the, all these non-Christian, and my uh, teaching about um, the uh, Trinity. Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And he asked someone come together and see Jamin up and come in, in front of Muslim and call God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's wonderful. She led the group, no believers, 100 Buddhists and Muslims, and she's going three persons, one God, they repeat. God the Father, God the Son, they all repeat after her. And I shared that in a church somewhere, and they said, uh, you had a woman speaking there. That would... <laughs> so did you hear what I just said? We had a Muslim telling, what are you, good night. Anyway. Again, a public school at a high school with 1,800 students. That's my hometown. Uh, the principal kind of become a friend. Uh, Sakom is a Christian, and how you make a friend when the Buddhist principal, people judging me say, Sakom, why you go down there, have a friend with the Buddhist believer? Jesus come for the sick, uh, for the sinner. The sick people need a doctor. So they open the school there, welcome anytime. We worship near to the Buddhist statue and we do a communion there in a public school with 1,800 uh, students there. Um, it's a wonderful, we talk about Jesus on the cross. The people, they never know about Jesus. What they're for? For our sin. It's a wonderful lesson. They look at that, my demonstration for them. Our it's message is, is Jesus. Everything yeah, is Jesus. Jesus. These people, they want to hear me reading the Bible. They never heard the word of Jesus before. So I read to them. They just like a silent night, uh, no pen dropping. Uh, this woman here scared my. He looked, he stared. Muslim. My teaching is a Muslim village. My say, we're going to say bye bye. We're coming. And say, what? I forgot the word. I want to know why she's, uh, she looks so mad. And she said, because you only be here for two days, you need to stay for one month and tell us more about Jesus. <laughs> and, Take his deep breath. <laughs> well, I figured but I could outrun her. He come to me and says, come, we're going to go hurry from here. We wanna <laughs> but turn around, she wanted us to stay there forever. Yeah. Um, Cambodia people, the Buddhist and Hindu, the same time. So they have evil spirit to protecting them. So they put the bell. And we're teaching about a merge. And one man come to me and say, uh, brother, you need to check these people before you uh, baptize in them. I say, what? They wear the voodoo or witchcraft bell. So they take them out and we burn them in front of people there to show them Jesus is the power of all. So, yeah. Again, we baptize a Muslim lady in the pond. 
uh, with American and Cambodia, we had the weather, and American knows nothing there. <laughs> the pond is a leak there, and I'm not telling him after I finish the bath tide. Yeah, the leech is, <laughs> leech is in the water. <laughs> Why are we in the weather? <laughs> the waders are too small for him, so Sakoma has the waders on, and Mark's out there baptizing in the dirty water with the leeches. The Muslim women wouldn't take their head coverings off. They wanted to have their head coverings on. It's, There's some good drinking water here. <laughs> Uh, well, this is a high school. One year, we baptized 93 people to the Lord in one day. 93 Buddhists. 90, yeah, Buddhists. In the front of 1,800 students watching in the public school. Well. The point about that is our medical mission trip has two parts to it. The physical, where we treat the people physically, and the spiritual. We don't have any strings attached. Um, people that don't want to listen, we still treat them. There's no string, we just show the love of God. But the medical mission always, always has two parts to it, the spiritual and the physical. And then we've started church leadership seminars, uh, working with people, leaders. Yeah. When we started, it's like um, about... Uh, 17 house church I work with uh, for six months. Then we invite them to come to the, our school and train them. Tell them who those three guys are. Uh, yes, this is one, two, three here, my former enemy. Uh, I work with the uh, commando, we call commando, American trainer. Uh, he's a, so, as a Khmeru, uh, North Vietnam Army, and uh, they enjoy to be work with me now. Uh, so we are uh, fighting each other the same area and now become a partner for Christ. It's, a, it's a working. It's a, the Lord is powerful to change our heart. Um, we become a, um, uh, 17 and become like 64. Now we work with 264 house churches. Some of the house church leaders, they'll start a church in their village but then the neighboring village will hear that they're learning about Jesus, so will you come over and help us? So that guy will go teach them and start a church there, and then pretty soon he's got three, four, five churches. We had over 260 house church leaders that we trained in January when we were there. They're, they're wide open. They love us because we just lay our Bibles out. Uh, we don't have all kinds of other stuff. It's all Bible. They ask a question, it's always, turn in your Bible, we'll look, show you in the Bible, and they love, they love the Bible. They want to know more. They're brand new believers. Many of them have never taken the Lord's Supper. Many of them have never been baptized, but they love Jesus and they want to know, they want to learn more about him from the Bible. And so we had, uh, you know, we get a lot, a lot of church leaders. Well, uh, he find out we need to emerge and he's called himself a Christian for many, many years. And he thought he had saved. Then we represented the book of Acts by um, second chapter, and to be baptized for forgiveness, and he won't jump in the water first. Uh, he called himself pastor, and he would not emerge, so um, we baptized pastor, and I never heard that before, I lived in the U.S. for 30 years. <laughs> it's a powerful message from Jesus. Um, toilet. This <laughs> toilet, <laughs> I love this. Uh, uh, he come to me, he say he faithful Christian and he planned a church, four or five church, and he kind of embarrassed, he not tell, but he tell his uh, people from the church to baptize. But uh, we spent like, this is uh, six years after we started with him. And he come run to the front, when he learned it through, he say, I thank God I'm not dead yet, and in front of 200 people, confess himself to the Lord. He say, he's a pastor, but do not know the truth. And Sukom was embarrassed to be baptizing in the toilet area. <laughs> and he don't care in the toilet. He want to be saved. <laughs> so, uh, the woman island. I uh, discovered at uh, 2005, my daughter had experienced there, walked through the whole island. Um, the island there, in the, during in the killing field time, they killed 2,000 men. The people of Cambodia believe 
when the dead people die and the spirit there, so they scared that island. Nobody go in that island. And 19, uh, 1985, uh, Cambodia liberation from the Pol Pot in um, the end of 1979. So from 80, 80 to 85, many young men, uh, young women, uh, they want to go to school, but they don't have no money. So they, they sell her body, stay on the street. Uh, to, uh, government try to clean up the street and put in and dumping in the island and just dumping out there. Nobody take care. They cannot go nowhere because just water's around. So I find out 2005, uh, some kid, the uh, growing up, the single mom, uh, they don't have a way to go to school. So I asked him, say, no way to go to school. He's 12 years old, 13 years old, do not know how to read, nothing. So I come back and I cannot stay still. I'm a baker. Uh, I try to bake in some money, uh, get enough to buy the boat for their children there, able to go to school. So They make bracelets. Those bracelets yeah. are out in the front. I thank you so much for you buying the bracelet that helping her. This lady coming to me. She says, Cry. Never see this much money, $140. Bring her there. Then she cried. She said, I can pay my kid. I can pay buy a battery so I can have life. Then um, uh, she say, whole life, never see this much money on her hand. And she say, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for American people to provide, to buy her prison. That saved her life. She say, concern her children go to school, this money. She said, the first thing we do, I said, what are you going to do with the money? Well, first we give 10% to the Lord, and then we pay our bills for the rice, and then we use the rest of the money for our children and to buy more rice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and any money like for those bracelets and stuff, there's no administration fee. We take all the money from that, 100% of it, we hand deliver it uh, to the ladies there. No, God opened another door. I think might is enough. Before, as a, my, he complains to come, now as a come complain, my, we have another ministry because we went out to do a medical mission because the water make people sick all over. So now we're going to drill the water, uh, clean water to the village, poor village. While I'm here, my daughter called me, that one is a village, no water. Uh, the goat that we put in there is dead because no water. And 75 people live there. It's uh, no water to drink. And we need to keep the water running every day. We, I have people request 160 right now in the list. And I do not know what I'm going to do. I need, I need your prayer. So we're drilling wells. Uh, I want to share this man. When I get into Cambodia, I go to the village. He walk like a monkey, go around me. I, I, I say, I don't have no money. First, I thought they come into looking for money. That, my fault. He not come looking for me, money. He come to ask me as a partner for Christ. He go to knock the door, serving the Lord. He born this way, the whole family. I bought a wheelchair. He give his daughter. That daughter cannot walk. He doing walking and give up uh, his wheelchair. And he say before he died, he want to have a ground, want to have a new body. We, he born like this. He don't like his body, but he want to share the gospel, even he cannot travel. It's encourage me. This man here is the same, same. He said, I'm a believer. 
I've been believing in Jesus for three years, and nobody, when we go there, uh, share Jesus Christ. We not share baptized. We say Jesus Christ. And he learned it. Oh, I thought I'd been saved. My pastor did not tell me I need to go be baptized. They put hand lay on me. And they don't want to baptize me because of my body. They don't want I, to touch it. I hate my body. I want to have a new body. I want to go to heaven right now. We baptize in Christ. And it's a great brother in Christ. Faithful to the Lord. Yeah. The children, um, we are uh, serving as a medical mission. And one day, I want to share this. The Chisel Village, they, they have uh, 1,500 family, about 5,000 people in that area. And he oversee in that village. Um, he saw my, my truck, his license plate is NGO. Then he said, what are you doing? Your language seems like not Cambodia, live in Cambodia. Cambodia live somewhere. I said, no, I'm in Cambodia. I'm afraid they're cheating, they corrupt because they want to pay me pay more about, uh, for the item I, I buy from them. We buy the mango tree, put in my sister's place. So um, I say, if you find a young man come to our Bible school for two and a half years, I will come to your village. Next day, he called me. I had two men. You make a deal, you have to come. <laughs> so we go to his village and do a medical mission, and the children run around. And my asking me, well, this is a new, uh, it's a new village too. I do not know much about this village at all. So I asked the chief leader, he said, this kid here do not have parents. I said, why? They died. The older boy raised the rest. So um, I come up with a friend in uh, Sexton, uh, helping them. My daughter involved work with them. Uh, it's so great. Uh, he's a young man now, role in the Bible school. He wants to be a preacher. Uh, and he's a great kid. Uh, the kid eating in the ground, we go to another island. A couple, I learn a lot from them. Lovely couple. They raised 30 children, nothing too much food to eat. Now they take another 30. I go there and say, stop doing that. <laughs> I say, I cannot help it. Uh, the kid on the street, I cannot pass. I had to pick him up. I say, you cannot even help yourself. I say, I'd rather die. I don't want to go passing these children. So they eat on the floor, the cat, the dog, eat with them. Um, they have a little uh, Serena, my daughter, older than Sapatui, uh, a lot of lice. Uh, uh, so she cleaned the hair and lots of lice, everyone, because they sleep on the floor, on the ground. So, uh, and this little girl here, um, they put in a, like a, they don't have no dumpster, but on a thresh place under the tree, no parent. So that the lady picked him up. Parents and were dead. And the mm -hmm. aunt took the little girl, special mm -hmm. needs, two mm -hmm. years old, went to an NGO, a non-government organization mm -hmm. that was doing shots or something and said, can you, she said, can you take this baby? And they said, we're not set up to take children. And the woman walked away, put the child at the base of a tree and just kept walking real fast. So this woman that we work with saw that and went and took the little child and, and she spoiled that all the other kids treat her really, really well. Uh, yeah, they have a place, uh, they build a, a church place and uh, so 60 children there and we involved to helping them, working them. So the medical missions, mm -hmm. the preaching school, the leadership training seminars, the orphans, the water well drilling, uh, we look like a couple of experts, but we're really idiots, that God just keeps opening doors for us that we just keep going through, and people have been partnering with us, and, and, uh, it's, and I've told Sakom this, he won't say it, but for somebody to go through what he went through in Cambodia and to go back to that country, most people, Cambodians, most of them don't want to go back even to visit. Some will go back and visit a little bit. 
but to go back and live there as a missionary, they don't want to do that. So Colm, God is blessing this ministry because of faithfulness. That faith works, the Pepperdine theme this year, especially, you know, the James 2 is about the those that manage without food and clothing, you know, those who are really hurting. And there's not a place hurting worse than Cambodia. When Pol Pot killed all those people, he killed the doctors, nurses, school teachers, lawyers, business people, government officials, killed off, wiped out the whole infrastructure. And so uh, they are like a brand new country and that opens up doors because the religious restrictions are so little. Uh, we can do just about anything. Um, and God's blessing this ministry because of his faithfulness to sacrifice his life for the cause. And uh, so the, like these 60 orphans falling into our lap is not a curse, it's a great blessing. We don't build orphanages, by the way. We, we leave the orphans in the village in which they live and we provide support for other people in the village, cousins, uncles, somebody to help continue to raise them so that they can grow up in that environment and then become regular citizens in their villages. If you put them in an orphanage, uh, they become institutionalized, they won't know how to function when they get older. So we just leave them in their villages, but we have all these hundreds of church leaders that we work with so they can help provide administration for us uh, to take, make sure the kids are taken care of. We also have three full-time doctors who work with us and they go treat the children. Every six to eight weeks, they go out to the island and treat the children. Dr. Jin, again, I told you, I say, I want to share this to my former enemy. One day, when I moved to Cambodia in 2009, when I organized a doctor and nurse, and he's there, and I do not know he's my enemy. One is an old, uh, his friend, Dr. Cambodian, he come in to say, well, before we get into business, I want to know you uh, a little bit. I say, what? I say, why you come back to Cambodia? I say, because the love of Jesus Christ, not me. Uh, he said, no, I not believe it, because most Cambodians went to U.S. They have family there, they have business there. You lie. You come for money, woman, and power. I said, no, I'm, I'm not a dad. I submit myself to the Lord. He said, what the Lord, what God you believe? is Jesus Christ, and he's coming up. Can you tell me your God, Jesus Christ? I do not know why today the word coming to my ear stuck in there. Most of the time, go in and out. <laughs> so uh, he said, you have time to share what you believe and you have something to show me? I said, yeah, I have the Bible. He said, when you can teach me? I said, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. You pick the time. He said, five o'clock in the morning. I said, what? Five o'clock in the morning, I confess. I can go fishing and hunting in the morning like four or five o'clock, but I never read or study Bible with someone at five o'clock in the morning. I say, I'm here. God sent me here, sent me here for fish of man. So five o'clock, he knocked the door for three months. He said, I give, give up my life. I give my life to the Lord. I'm an atheist. I don't believe nothing. And I find out he's not Vietnamese army. He's a Vietcong. He's a surgeon. Then, after three months, I started with him through the book of Matthew and book of Acts. After he baptized for three months, he come to me and says, come, I want to serve the Lord. And look at him and say, take me many, many years to, to come in here. He looked at me like a stranger again. I say, you, want, you don't want to share the blessing. You want taking yourself. you greedy. <laughs> I say, you already blessed, you already saved. What else do you want? I want to serve the Lord. I say, take your time, brother. No, I want to know. Not tomorrow, now. I say, then he asked me, when Jesus come to earth, what he do? I say, he chose disciple, training disciple. He healing people to sh show his God, his power, prove his God, his Messiah. 
What else? I say, why you ask too much? I want to know what else. Uh, why he, he healing people? I say, well, he love. He want to show his power, what I tell you. I want to do like Jesus did. You take care of spiritual, I take care of physical. I learned a lot from the new Christian. He want to have blessed from God to serve in the Lord. He want to work. He want to have faith and work together, not separate. He want to be action. He just not, I have faith, I have to show my faith. I have to work to serve the Lord. This but, is our last slide. Yeah, he brought the right one, his name is Tola. Uh, after uh, Dr. Yin, he brought him, and him brought Selah in the middle, like a young boy. <laughs> and Dr. Da, I tell him, I call him all doctor, because he finished medical school. He looked like a 15, but he's 27. <laughs> uh, he's a great servant. Look at doctor and I tell him to go this, to go there, take care of the animal. He go take care of the animal. And his license is a doctor. Uh, I love this three guy. He's an administrator. Uh, he works side by side. When I'm here, the goat is die. I tell him, you need to take care of the goat. He go out there, take about three hours to get there. And some medical need, nighttime, daytime, he be there. He's a new Christian, and um, he's a really uh, good serving the Lord there. We well. can talk for a lot longer. <laughs> We're going to close. Uh, yeah. We thank you for uh, staying a little long, but yeah. uh, the story of Sakom's life and what God is doing through him uh, and through the ministry is great. The website is just CambodiaMinistries.org. If you want to go uh, look at some things, CambodiaMinistries.org. Um, and let's, uh, let's close with a prayer together. Okay. Father, we are uh, amazed at your power, your wisdom, and your love for the Cambodia people. We're so thankful for the work that you do through Sakom and, uh, and for others who are, are serving in your kingdom there. We pray you'll continue to bless all the many works uh, that are going on that uh, we bring glory to you, not to ourselves, uh, but that the name of Jesus is proclaimed in a great way as we show his love. In Christ we pray, amen. amen. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.